Okay, so we are on our way to Shannonville, Ontario for an investigation tonight at a, at a, a Stay in the left person's lanes. residence. In 12 kilometers, take exit 556 on Shannonville that, Road toward County Road 7. Um, claims at this place have been stuff about uh, the usual noises and furniture moving, uh, footsteps in the attic. Both the uh, owner of the house and his tenant in the basement have claims to uh, see a little girl. But uh, why she's there, we don't know. Hopefully we'll get some answers for the client tonight on that. Uh, it has actually caused quite a riff in this household where they are constantly f feeling uneasy. They uh, at one point moved out of the master bedroom to sleep in, t in the living room. Uh, they've had the house blessed, they've had the house smudged, they've used holy water. Seems to have quieted things down for a little bit, but uh, not long enough. Okay, so we're here doing an investigation in private home tonight. Um, we've been invited by the, uh, the owners. They've had some happenings in the house and we wanted to get a little bit more information. Um, how long have you lived here? So myself, I've lived here two years next month. Okay. My spouse has owned the home this past November was four years. Four years. Okay. All right. And if, uh, in your own words, do you want to describe a few of the things that have been happening? So to me, like myself, things I've noticed, um, last year, May, just shortly after my spouse's grandmother passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, I was out in the kitchen, thought my spouse was just being a jerk, came out, took his hand, put it on my shoulder, lightly ran down the hallway, when in fact it wasn't him, he was actually here in the living room. Wow. So I felt a thumb on the back of my shoulder and like over, a... like over top, I could feel the fingers okay. right here. And where the kitchen is downstairs, that was our bedroom. Okay. I, on two different occasions, felt, I was woken up by the feeling that somebody had their hands on my chest pushing me into the bed. Okay. That happened twice. Twice. I have never experienced this kind of stuff before. Wow. It freaks me out. It's our bedroom that is where I find it happens. I had my spouse bring our mattress out here to the living room, right here. We had it on the floor, right here. I slept like a baby for two weeks. Okay. I could go to sleep, didn't wake up, I slept like a baby. Okay. The bed went back in there and it's all Back over again. Um, anything else that stands out? Um, so in the entryway to the home to come up here, yeah. we had been out grocery shopping. We have a lot of stairs to come up as you've seen. Mm -hmm. um, so we bring a couple of loads at a time. Mm -hmm. And then one night we come up and we have the handle lock and the deadbolt. Yeah. My spouse was unlocking the door. I set bags down because it's just, oh, we try to bring up as much as we can in one load to try and get it done. Yeah. And when I leaned up against the wall and looked up, I could see the board that is, uh, to the me, it's almost to square. The attic there. Into the attic. Yeah. It was moved. Oh. And there was insulation on the stairs. Okay. Now, you would have to be at least nine feet tall to be able to reach up there, okay. to be able to move that. Okay. There was no broom, no shovel, no nothing at the top of our stairs for anybody to be able to... So no idea how that, no. how or why that happened. No. Okay. And that is linked, so... Travis has told me it goes up across and, it, and there's another entry to the attic. Comes in into the, the house? Yes, in my closet. Beside your bedroom? Yes. Gotcha. The closet in our bedroom. Okay. Right up. It's there. Um, and there's something about that closet. Mm -hmm. My spouse will not go to bed at night without shutting that light off that's for that closet and Thank shutting that closet door. door. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Those are some pretty interesting things. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're we're here tonight to go through some things with our equipment, see if we can capture anything, see if we can make sense of anything, mm -hmm. and see what we can do to help. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having us here tonight. Oh, thank you for coming. <laughs> and uh, we look forward to getting set up in a few minutes, and mm -hmm. we'll start rolling, okay? Great. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. So I'm going to go near the iguana and just see that show the high reading here. Okay. Oh, wow. well, it's higher than that. Okay, so we're getting into the red. Yeah. Yeah. So then as I pull away, it drops right down. Yeah. And then like near the iguana. 
the cage itself is not anything. Cage doesn't do anything? No. Okay. Um, I don't think there's a light. No. So. But we come back to the middle of this room. Yep, as soon as I came here. And, and again, it goes we're crazy. 10 feet. Okay. So we got some here. Okay. Um, so, I mean, the as they're sleeping, screen. yeah, so as they're sleeping, I mean, they're going to have some energy there. There's some right here. This is his side of the bed. Yeah. Oh, there's like right up to the red. Wow. Oh, well, there we go. Let's focus. Okay, got it. All right, so Shannonville investigation. We're currently walking around doing some readings. we got Kat and Jenny doing that. It's a team of four, Sorry. Carolyn, Jenny, Kat, myself. Yeah. Client is here. Back. We'll get his perspective of things. Mm -hmm. Shannonville, going on. Okay, so we are in the master bedroom of this house. This is the closet. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps again. Uh, the claim being in this, particularly, the owner of this house does not like this closet, neither did his mother. Uh, I went in here to do a K2 reading, just to verify there was no um, magnetic fields or EMFs. To, to make someone feel uneasy in here. Dead, 100% nothing, no hits, complete head to toe um, goosebumps, which I've never experienced before being with this team. So uh, based on that, Carolyn, I thought it'd be a good idea to uh, get the audio on this camera going and see if we can hit anything right now while we're waiting for the owner of the house to come home. Again, I don't feel any drafts in here. Mm -hmm. I don't, this, this is pretty solid in here. Like I. I I don't feel any draft in here whatsoever. Kat, do you? Just to get a second opinion. Do you feel any draft in here whatsoever? No, the temperature's a little cooler, but, but I would expect that. Right. Maybe, um, but I would being, expect that. But all the, to me, with all the clothes and the carpeted floor, mm -hmm. temperature in here did not drop that much at all, but I did experience massive goosebumps head to toe. Oh, did? Yes. Oh. Is there anybody in this room with us right now? In this closet? If you are, please let yourself know, this little thing, the lights flicker. The more flickers, the stronger your uh, energy. We have a camera with night vision, hopefully it can pick up something. We also have an audio device that's very, very sensitive. Is there... I'm feeling cooler towards my legs, to be honest. Are you? I'm asking because the owners of this house um, are saying that there's somebody here that's basically for lack of a better term, being a nuisance. They don't like it. It's making them feel unhappy, uneasy. So are you going to help us out here or what? Are you going to let us know you're with us? Or did we come all this way for nothing and these people are uh, not, not going to be able to get helped? Which is not what we want. Well, I mean, obviously these people called us for a reason. We really want to help these people. They seem like a very nice couple. They just want to live their lives and live a comfortable, normal life as husband and wife in their house. So why are you bugging them? Do you know the family? Are you attached to the family? What's the deal with the closet? Why is it that they feel that your um, presence is in that closet? There's a lot of clothing in there. There's a uh, crossbow in there. Is that something that upsets you? You don't feel that that space maybe is the right place for those things? That it's a space that belongs to you? What is it you want from these people? Do you want people to leave? Do you want us to leave? Does it bother you that we're in here today? Because we don't know. If you don't tell us, we don't know if you want people out of here, or if you want people to be more respectful, or if you want them to acknowledge you or acknowledge your land. But you got to tell us so we can tell them. So we are in the master bedroom. We did discover that whatever's on the floor down there to your the, the, right. Yeah has a really high EMF. Yeah. Yeah, Phil and I discovered that when we came in here, but when you go about six inches above it, it disappears. Okay. So at bed level, it, there's no EMF. Okay. Effect. 
Okay. That's, that's the first thing I always look because those clocks are really bad for okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Anything on audio is virtually going to be not usable. Just, mm -hmm. You know, unless it's extremely clear. Yeah. Um, now, apparently, when they started here, they built this house, and this was actually supposed to be a subdivision. So there's like this house and like five wells on the property. Uh, is there a reason why they didn't finish the subdivision? Does it have anything to do with the presence? that's in this house today. Are you attached to the property? Are you connected in any way with the house itself? Car noise outside. Apparently, um, over, I don't know how many years ago this was, but apparently there have been two murders on this road. Um, across the road and down one. Um, down one or two houses. So there have been two murders. Uh, one was a hit on, uh, on a native gentleman. Except that when they came after him, they went to the wrong house. And got the wrong person. And then there was another one where uh, the house across the road um, there was a fight between two people and the husband ended up murdered. The wife, there was a young wife with a baby and she was expecting a second one when this happened. And she left the house and never went back. So is there anybody here that's connected with either one of those incidents? Because after he was murdered, the husband was murdered, uh, the wife never set foot in the house again. Um, when they arranged to have her stuff moved, she wouldn't even go on the property. She stayed on the road. So. No, yeah, nope. that could, was near here? Uh, across the road. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, you know, what if he's looking for his wife and she's not there? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing in there, but laying here, that whole closet just creeps you out. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I, yeah, that door would be shut if <laughs> I was here. I'm leaving it open to see if we get anything, but... Yes? Yeah. Hey. Just us. Just you? Hello. Hi. Thank you for the audio. Now, now you're resting. Okay, yeah, now so... Resting. um. I got most of that conversation with him downstairs on camera. Beautiful. Sorry. Do you want to be on camera or not? Sure, that's okay. fine. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, there was... Um, Pardon the light. There we go. There was a younger lady that was down here for a while. <clears throat> she used to walk and lump down this um, hallway for a bit. Um, and there was also a little boy that was here too. Okay. Um, Roughly how, how old? I would say the little boy is probably about eight, um, and the girl was probably, I'd say, teens. Okay. And the thing she kept mentioning the most was she went to sleep and woke up like this. And um, I tried to communicate with her a little bit, um, and uh, she just kept saying, you know, why am I like this? Where is everybody? Um, and then, uh, so I actually spoke to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she wouldn't leave this hallway for some reason. She wouldn't okay. come into the rooms or and this is the, <gasps> this is here. the, uh, okay. Oh, is this hallway here? Yeah. Okay. And she would just keep pacing up and down this hallway okay. and yep. she wouldn't, she wouldn't leave. Right. And is this the room that nobody likes to go in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is our bedroom right now. But okay. But yeah, there's a lot of. You can feel the activity in here, oh, but sorry, it's, there's a little one sleeping. But it's it's minor. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, th they both ran in here for a little while. Like, were they in the same? Like, when you'd see them, were they together, or separate um, times? Separate times. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so. uh, he kept going to my uh, 
not this window on that wall, mm -hmm. but that window over there, and he'd hide. Okay. You know, all he thought he was hiding. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he even went as far as uh, knocking over one of our stands and breaking it. So you're able to communicate with him as well? Yeah. Okay. So he okay. So just to reiterate, uh, a, a young native-looking woman dressed in Victorian clothing, possible money in her twenties, and a young native boy. How old? About five. Between six to eight. Okay, running from somebody you yeah. think so, and yeah. actually was able to manifest manifest enough energy to knock yeah. over a table. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. uh, at first I thought it was just maybe the trains that keep going by here all the time, mm -hmm. but where we had it, there was no way it could be. There was no way it could fall over not unless it was pushed. Mm -hmm. okay. you know what I mean? And I think what has happened is he maybe went by and bumped it mm -hmm. and knocked it over by mistake. Because like I said, he kept he kept doing this. You know what I mean? Like okay. looking so is around. that night or is it during the day? <clears throat> I picked it up a lot about two, between two and four in the morning. Okay. But uh, we uh, we smudge a lot because I'm native. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's been kind of... Now again with the smudging, like I mentioned upstairs, what is your percentage of native? Are I'm you, half. You're half, okay. Yes. Uh, so that's that's the recommendation if you're going to continue smudging is to try and find some elder mm -hmm. to well, do it. Well, my son is full blood though. Okay. So he's been uh, helping me out with that a lot okay. too. Okay. But I've got a, the, the feather I have is from an elder too okay. that I got and got a bless too, so. Well, it doesn't hurt. Um, there's, there's elders around that'll do it for mm -hmm. you anyway. So I may as well probably get the whole house done, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, let's yeah. give them an offering. How would you like to handle this? Um, I almost feel here we're better in smaller groups. Yeah, um, two and two. Two and two. We have two audios, we have two cameras. Yeah. Um, I, just, I, 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 I can't see this being a, lot, a late night at all. No. But I, I, don't, I feel bad because I don't want to... I don't want to rush out the door yeah. and make mm -hmm. them feel... And you don't um, want to belittle what they're experiencing thank because... You, that's what I, was I don't want to belittle them at all. Like, I mean, obviously they're experiencing something enough for them to ask for help. Yeah. Yes. What it is? What are you? Like, why are you here? Like, we, we're here for a reason to get some answers. If there is somebody here, please, like, let us know. Like, like he described something in the hall coming yeah, through exactly, here, coming right? Through, across the ceiling, through the wall, into this room. Yeah. There, there, there's obviously something upsetting this family that would be nice to get to the root of to, to, to answer some questions and put them at ease. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree with you, Carolyn. Two and two. Two up here, two downstairs. Um, I'm just wondering, would it be best to have um, like two, two women downstairs to try and draw the energy of that woman. Sure. Sure. And then well, why don't we send these two together this time? Okay. Okay. And we'll stay up here because we were we thought we were getting something up yeah. there earlier. Shut the light off and um, there the uh, tenant down here says that a there's a native girl named Susie who's possibly in her twenties. Uh, he seems to be in distress that goes up and down the hallway and then uh, into this room as well as a young native boy we don't know his name uh, he might be eight to ten years old it seems like he's running from someone so we're going to see if we can um, talk to him the lights are out so you can speak to us a lot of different ways you can um, make this machine move where the light is green if you come near um, this machine should show different colors of lights and if you can put it right up to the red i'm going to know for sure that you're here i've also got a machine where i can hear a lot of things it's a little bit hard because i'm talking too and uh, shuffling around but if you want to speak or say something i might be able to hear you my friend uh, jen also has a uh, recorder so if you want to appear in any form then hopefully we'll be able to catch you on that but what we're here to do is to help you out. Susie, are you in distress? Are you, um, has somebody hurt you? And you're in distress and you're trying to get uh, someone to help you. Was this a place that you used to live, live in before Susie? 
And is your name Susie? You know this land um, is traditional Mohawk territory. Are you a native person? What is your spirit name, Susie? Who are your people? What clan are you with? I'm Bald Eagle Clan, and I have a spirit name. I'd like to know what yours is. Are you connected with that little boy that's seen here too? We're told that he's afraid that he's running from somebody. Are you looking for him or is he looking for you? Who's that little boy, Susie? We don't know his name. Can you tell us his name? Everyone that lives in this house are native as well. So they may be your people, they may be your um, they may be your relatives. Is that why you're here? Everybody here is is here because we want to try to communicate and try to give you some sense of peace. So if something's going on where you're not at peace and if we can help you, then we're going to help you. We want to help. So I know there's a little boy here too because he's been seen and he seems like he's really in distress. So if you're that little boy and you're trying to get some adults or some grown-ups to help you, can you come and move this machine for me? Or come and say some words that we can hear on this? Or brush against Jen, because again, she doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to brush against me, you can too. It's okay, I can take it. Yeah, she can take it more than me. The people in the house, sometimes they, they don't feel comfortable. They're not sure if there's... Um, other than you and Susie, if there's something maybe scary in the house too? Is there something scary in the house that you're running from? Or that you're trying to warn them about? So these are your people. They share your traditions. And they probably share your blood as well. So when they see you running through the halls and that you're running from someone and you're afraid, then it bothers them because they're your people. When I was in my room, we were chatting back and forth. He finished setting up his computer, and I got my computer going. We're talking back and forth. We hear this snapping sound coming from the hallway. It's like someone was dropping a marble on glass, like a loud snapping. So we said, what is that sound? And we just kept hearing it snapping. Like every minute or two, you'd hear this loud snapping. And then I didn't think anything of, of the, of, like, about it anymore after that, because I just figured it was just whatever, right? And then... Um, it was Christmas Eve, we brought my mom home. Uh, we moved in here in November, we brought my mom home. And I started noticing that I'd wake up and all my covers were ripped off. And I just thought that was kind of weird, so I didn't think nothing of it. So I just would wrap up my covers and roll over and same deal. Like I'd wake up and my covers would be half ripped off. I started sleeping with my covers in my mouth. And then there was one night I woke up and I felt hands on my ankles, and it was like they was pushing on my ankles into the bed, hurting me. So I sat up and I said, fuck off and leave me alone. And then there was nothing anymore after that. And that's this room here? No, that was when I was downstairs, downstairs. in the living room. Okay. And then I'm just trying to think. My girlfriend here at the time, her name was Callie, she said she woke up and she felt something was touching her face. Mm -hmm. um, she wasn't around very long, she was only around for a couple months. And then my mother was telling me that she's seen things walking by her door, but they would never come in her room. She said, one was tall, one was short. She said, have you seen anything like that? I said, no, I haven't seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, the young lad, he mentioned something to me one day, too. He was coming in the house, and he seen, he seen someone standing in the upstairs window, and he said it was a girl. And I says, well, I seen something standing in my doorway, and to me it looked like a girl either wearing a nightgown it was either a hospital gown or she was wearing like a nightgown or a slip or something. And she was standing in the doorway and you can only see uh, part of her shoulder, part of her face, and just the bottom part of her body. You couldn't see her feet or anything, but she was just standing in the door looking around the corner. Hmm. So 
I got to the point where the cat would sit in the chair and just constantly stare at the doorway, so I just, I locked the door. I left that door locked and I started using the other door. And there was one time where I was standing in the archway here. Cody was talking to me, and I'm looking at him in the hallway here, because I'm facing this way and Cody's in front of me, and I seen something going across the ceiling. And it, to me, it looked like it was dragging itself behind. You know what an octopus looks like? Mm -hmm. It was dragging its parts behind it. That's what it looked like, but you could see a face. It was looking at me as it was, it was going across the ceiling, and it was looking back at me, and it went through the wall in my mom's room. And I was just watching it as it was going by. I didn't see anything. here? Yeah, it was right over here. So what direction were you facing? So I was standing right here. The young lad, he's standing right there talking to me, and I'm watching it going across the ceiling right about here and as it got to about here I seen its face looking back at me but you can see it was pulling its parts behind it like it was dragging its mm -hmm. parts and it went right through the wall hmm. okay so what was explained to me by the gentleman down here was that this hallway he has seen and spoke to a young woman and roughly about 20 years old of native descent but wearing kind of like 1800 style Victorian dress and a young boy about six or eight years old, who he says is telling him he's being chased. He's constantly looking over his shoulders, he said, uh, wearing a ribbon shirt and uh, like, like leathery type pants. And the young woman is constantly confused, asking where they are, or where, where is she, why is she here, or where are they type of thing. Um, that's predominantly in this hallway where they basically go from the door, this wall, was never here. This was put up by the owner of the house. They'd walk through the wall and come back. So, like, they're pacing this hallway in a panic. And periodically, they'd make their way in that bedroom behind you, Carolyn, asking the same type of questions. Okay? Okay. So, we're here now, Carolyn, Phil, with the owner of the house, who uh, will not be on camera, but his voice will be captured for audio reasons for asking questions to hopefully get some answers down here from the basement. So um, I'll start it off again by saying, if there's anybody here with us right now, uh, please let yourself known. I do believe the young woman's name is Susie, and the little boy, unfortunately, I don't remember the name that was given to me. If either one of you are here, please let yourself known. You seem to have a big draw to this house. And again, if you're uncomfortable speaking to me, the owner of the house is here. If you feel more drawn to him, please answer his questions or let us know. Give him some sort of sign that you're here so that we can get some sort of answers for these people, please. Yeah, I don't like being in this room. Well, we don't want to make you uncomfortable, so you can stay as long as you want or you can leave any time and we'll stay down here. Yeah. Um, I... And then there was something with this freaking bathroom. I don't know if it was not the bathroom. Yeah, but when I was talking to Blaine about it, and I had slight differences, um, when he was mentioning the names to me, I was getting Anna or Helen was the names I was getting. Okay. And that's what I just was feeling. You're feeling, you, you, so the names you're getting are Anna, Anna or Helen? Anna or Helen. And he's saying Susie yeah. or Susan. Is there anybody here by that name? Susan, Susie, Anna, or Helen? Tagging cars, going by. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you wish to ask, sir? We'd like to know who you are and why you're here. Are you trying to tell us something or communicate with us or why you're constantly waking everybody up? That bang that just happened, where did that come from? Behind it was you? behind me, yep. Okay, I'm going to assume that's the family. It was them, yep. This family just wants some answers and to be left alone. The gentleman who's down here that owns the house says he's feeling very uncomfortable being in this room. 
and it's got to be something to do with you and we'd like to know why why you can't move on and leave this family alone don't have to be frightened of me I promise you I mean no harm please let us know you're here this family has a lot of questions they asked us here we came a long way to help this family out It'd be nice if we could leave tonight with some answers for them. There it is again. It's like a cracking noise, like a popping cracking noise. Hmm. Very, very subtle though. Very subtle. Are you trying to say something? I can hear some like very, very, very subtle cracking and popping noises. Is that you? I heard you a couple weeks ago in the uh, upstairs door, the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. There was three knocks on the glass on the door. Okay. It was plain as day and it was loud. There was nobody there. Yeah, I remember you putting that in the email. There's a door behind the gentleman that owns this house. Can you close that door, please? Just to, if you can do that, and use, you can use all the energy you can. You can use, feed off my energy, anything that will help you. We just want some acknowledgement that you are here and you understand that we're just here to get answers. Tagging that big truck or train going by. Okay, Caroline, I can see you there on camera. So yeah, the bottom right the one there. Bottom right one there is uh, over in the front. Yeah. Yeah, that's her right. She's right here beside me. But when I got that footage from that camera, there wasn't anybody living downstairs at the okay. time. There wasn't anybody there. It was just me and Cheryl. Okay. Okay, Carolyn, we can see you in the uh, the camera behind you. I guess you're standing directly underneath that one in the corner. Now, according to the homeowner, there was nobody living in the basement at the time when these when this uh, happened. That camera's filthy right now. Okay, well, I'm gonna give it a shot anyhow. Yeah, 10 4, we're ready when you are. All right, I'm gonna start. 10 4. So for this camera recording, we were looking at the upper left mm -hmm. screen. We're capturing all of them. In the bottom right, we may see Carolyn show up. I'm actually going to move out in front of the bushes because we don't see anybody on the camera. So. Ten four. There she is. So you can see her in the bottom right. Yep. Okay. She's not there. She's, okay. There she is. There we okay. see her. In the bottom right of the top left panel. Yeah, now she's behind the tree. We don't see her. Okay. <coughs> Which one should she be in? She's, she's hidden by the scotch pine right now. So right now she's standing behind this tree. Okay. And we're trying to experiment with a, with cigarette smoke to see if we can catch any smoke on camera mm -hmm. to see if that causes any of the, if that, what we saw in the other video. Are you seeing any of that smoke on the camera? Uh, that's a negative, Carolyn. No, we don't see anything. Okay, well, it was a theory we had. Oh, I just saw something. I just saw something. All right, ten four. Just before you said that, we did see a tiny bit of uh, right here a shadow of a plume of smoke come out, but uh, nothing as drastic as we saw in the previous video. There, see it? She just did it. I saw it again. Yeah, we just saw another uh, little tiny thing come out of the of behind that tree. But the smoke is also dark, yeah. not light down there. Yeah, that was worth a try, but uh, that didn't manifest uh, anything near what we saw in the previous video. Cool. Okay, Carolyn and Carolyn and Phil, master bedroom upstairs. 
it's approximately 10.30 at night. Alright, so we have <clears throat> my friend Phil and I are up here and my friends Jen and Kat are downstairs. <clears throat> so if you want to make your presence known to anybody tonight, you have your choice of how you want to do it. Um, one of the things we just want to get an answer for, for uh, the people that live here, is just who are you and why are you here? When they built the house, did they disturb somebody? Did they disturb you? Are you connected with the land? Tagging a car. Was this your land before? Are you connected with the people in the house? The thing is, I mean, if that's the case, if there's something you're not happy with, so you, you need to communicate, you need to tell us. Um, so we can share that information with them and it, maybe we can help them come up with some resolution. Because this is their home. And, you know, this house has changed owners several times, so maybe you're scaring people away, but there's always going to be somebody else coming in, and it's going to keep disturbing you unless we find a way to communicate. Is there anything, is there any particular reason why you seem to be focused or more attached to the gentleman that lives here as opposed to his wife? Does it have anything to do with um, the fact that they're they're different? I, I don't want to say cultures, but like they're they're different tribes, right? Like yes. she's she's one, he's another. Yes. Um, are, are you connected with more of his background than hers? You know, maybe you're from a time that you wouldn't have had um, a couple from two different tribes. You know, maybe a hundred years ago these two groups didn't get along. You know, and now you have a man from one and a woman from another living together. And maybe they just, that's just, they just can't comprehend that because a like hundred years ago that just wouldn't have happened. You know? Okay, so my friend Carolyn was just asking you some questions. If you feel more comfortable speaking to a man, answer my questions. Why are you here? As I said before, uh, we have absolutely no disrespect at all. We are here to simply get some answers for this for this family that lives here. Uh, they seem like a very genuine down-to-earth couple with um, great morals that just want to live their life and be at peace and you seem to want to disrupt that and, it's n and we can't understand why other than the fact that you feel, obviously, by the sounds of it, they're doing something wrong. I hope you can sense the fact that we mean no harm whatsoever. We just simply want some answers. We, these people asked for help, and that's what we're here to do, is to give the best help we can, and we can't do that without your help. One thing Carol and I talked about that we think might be the issue is the fact that you and your wife are from two different tribes, your heritage, mm -hmm. and we seem to think that culture-wise from years ago, it was kind of like a Romeo and Juliet situation. You're from one tribe, she's from another, kind of like the Montagues, and the, you can't have two different tribes coming together, right? Back mm -hmm. then, maybe that was a, 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 a no-no. You can't, you can't marry her, she's from another tribe. You can't marry him, he's from another tribe. Maybe the fact that you have heritage from one tribe and she has heritage from another could be what could be stirring something. Mm -hmm. um, also the fact that, again, the, the, the history of the site, we're not sure. Is it a burial ground where, you know, your wife was saying that this was supposed to be a subdivision of about six or seven houses. Yep. One was built and that was it. Yours was built and that was it. Did they come across something? Did they disturb something? Did they find something? Kept their mouth shut, built your house and took off? Yeah, because there's five wells on the property. Exactly, three entrances to the area. Yeah. So questions like that, maybe. Okay. This is my house now. 
Is there something that you trying to tell us or trying to communicate with us? I don't know if you're catching this, Carolyn, but I am getting complete goosebumps again. Okay. From head to toe. Um, you keep asking me questions. I'm going to go step into the closet. Because you seem to say that's the hot spot for activity as far as things you hear. Okay. Well, there's, there's just been a couple times in the closet. Okay. So I'm going to step in here. Hopefully the audio catches something again. You won't be on camera. Don't worry about that. But the fact that I just got goosebumps again that I hardly, I, like I never get when I'm on an investigation mm -hmm. and I'm getting complete head to toe goosebumps. So obviously in my opinion, something's reacting to your voice. Yeah. So was it you that I was emailing and told you about when I did the smudging? Yes, that was yeah. me. Because it was, um, it was later at night and um, I decided to go through the whole house and I went through the house and I opened some of the windows and as I went through the house, I've never done the, the stairwell. Mm -hmm. And as I opened the door and I was blowing the smoke out know, into the hallway, I could hear a noise in the ceiling and it sounded like it was moving. And I stood there for a minute and listened and I just kept blowing the smoke. And as I heard the noise move, you could hear the, the ceiling creaking. And then I heard a noise in the wall beside me and then the door at the bottom of the stairs went bang. Like someone banged it. Mm. Is that you doing that? And there was another time we're uh, laying in bed and you could see uh, moonlight coming through the window. So the kitchen was somewhat lit. And where the kitchen is, where that Tag in the one wall is there, you see some really quick. Just pop up around the corner and look. It looked to be about, about the, maybe the height someone about maybe four or five foot tall, they had a skinny neck with a big head. And they just moved like really quick. Because I was just looking, I just happened to be looking out the door. Okay. The bed was just in a slightly different position, but seeing that. So I've got, uh, we're continuing a recording and investigation of this residence. And uh, today is Saturday, the uh, 5th of May, 2018. It's a, I think it's about 11.30. I can't really see my watch. Anyway, um, so we've got the uh, one of the homeowners here, and what uh, I'll do is I'll just ask him a couple of questions. So if there's anybody here, anybody in this bedroom area, um, any spirit or entity or, or any being that wants to make contact with us, whether it's coming from this closet or just within this bedroom area, what I'm asking is that, uh, or what I want you to know is that we're here from a good place. We want to try and help the home, homeowners here who uh, don't quite understand what's going on in their house. And if somebody is trying to communicate with them or has some sort of issue with them being here or anyone else, uh, we want to try and communicate with you. You're trying to make contact. Um, there's signs around the house that the homeowners are seeing and the tenants downstairs. So uh, this is a good opportunity if you want to let us know that you're here. If there is someone here, can you tell us why you're here? Is there something about this house or about anybody in the house that's bothering you? Is there something that you're, you disapprove of or something that's, that you don't like? People that live here, they hear things and they see things and it makes it hard for them to enjoy being at this house. Can you tell me, are you trying to communicate with them? I'm going to get the lady that lives here. I'm going to get her to ask a few questions. First and foremost, I want to know um, if it's possible there's a Clifford here. And the reason I'm asking is um, Clifford is my deceased husband. Never got the chance to see our grandchildren. And one of our grandchildren, who is two years old now, almost three, has stood in my living room, looking down the hallway, talking to somebody. So Clifford, if it's you that's here trying to enjoy what and I are able to enjoy with our grandchildren, please just let me know. 
another possibility that I've thought of is, you know, is it my mom? Any sign um, I would like to know. This closet seems to be a pretty popular place for things in, in this home. And you don't have to hide in there if that's what's happening. I, I just feel uneasy when, you know, my spouse has to close the closet door because whatever it is he's feeling. If I was feeling trapped in a closet, I certainly, you know, wouldn't want the door closed. If you've been here for however many years and this is your home too, we would like to know. I don't want to, to you to feel you're confined to a certain area. Does it bother you that they feel uneasy? Is that not what you meant? How do you feel at night? How is your sleep? My sleep is horrible. Anxiety kicks on five levels higher than what it is. Did you know that that's how she feels? When people don't know why you're trying to communicate with them, it's disturbing. I don't want to harm you, and I don't want you to feel uneasy, and I don't want to feel uneasy either. I enjoy sleep. What do you want from, from this uh, entity? What is it that you hope for? Peace. We can all live here together. So we're going to wrap up tonight now. Uh, we've been here for a couple hours. We've uh, split off into two groups. We have alternated upstairs and downstairs. Honestly, I don't know if anything was captured. Hopefully there's something that we can get some answers here to help this, these families out. Um, can't really promise anything. The night was kind of quiet, but uh, that being said, uh, audio was running by itself for a while during breaks when we first got here we turned the audio on um, like I said was anything captured we don't know we'll have to go through the stuff and find out hopefully we have something to uh, bring some closure and answers but we really have to look into things and we'll see how things go so other than that uh, this is a wrap up and uh, yeah we'll see how we'll have to see how things go good night